Welcome back to Luke's Daily Movie Reviews. Um, this is Season 2, Episode 45, I believe. The last two have been horror, scary movies, basically. Well, sort, sort of how they all began. The first was... This is episode 43, I believe, was the silent Nosferatu. 44 was Nosferatu the Vampire from 1979. And this one is Francis Ford Coppola's take on the Dracula story. Francis Ford Coppola, who directed The Godfather. This is his take on Dracula. This is Bram Stoker's Dracula, starring Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Anthony Hopkins, and Keanu Reeves. Um, whenever Francis Ford Coppola adapts a book into a movie, he always likes to put the author's name before the title. In The Godfather, it was called Mario Puzo's The Godfather, or John Grisham's The Rainmaker, or in this case, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And this is a dark and nasty gothic, uh, intense, disturbed, and disturbing movie. Uh, Basically, it follows the same sort of setup that the Nosferatu movies do, because Nosferatu was originally an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's book, Dracula. And so, Jonathan Parker, or whatever Keanu Reeves' character's name is, gets lured to Transylvania. To Count Dracula's castle to try to sell him a house. Something like the same story as Nosferatu. And he ends up getting trapped there with some evil sort of evil seductive vampire women. At first, he meets Gary Oldman's Dracula, who is, looks old and creepy, and has weird hair, and, and some of the same creepiness that Nosferatu, and uh, some anger, some rage. Some outbursts by Gary Oldman. And, oh, first of all, it starts with the medieval Dracula before he was a vampire. I don't know. And it shows the death of his wife, Winona Ryder. It is very... It's debatable what exactly is going on here, what connection this is. It's like, it's like Keanu Reeves' girlfriend is some sort of a reincarnation of her, or, they're because all, Anthony Hopkins was also in the first scene, and what is, is uh, Van Helsing present day a reincarnation of that guy? Because he, you saw him and Anthony Hopkins in that scene. It's very, I don't know. So this movie starts by focusing on Keanu Reeves, and he gets trapped there, and it quickly switches to focusing on Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder, and their sort of strange romance connection in this movie, where she sort of remembers him, but she doesn't know why, and he's been searching for her for a long time, or... He saw her picture in Jonathan 
and his if he saw the picture and he like do you believe in destiny and uh, then there's went on with Ryder's friend Lucy who gets infected and this is when Anthony Hopkins uh, Van Helsing comes into the story to try to cure her they are unsuccessful and Dracula continues to seduce Winona Ryder's character and there's all sorts of nastiness and creepiness and over the topness. I don't know if the book was this way. I think maybe this is Francis Ford Coppola's interpretation of the book. He made it his own. I don't know. If I've, never, I've never read the book, so I can't speak for that. But I've never read the book. This movie primarily focuses on Winona Ryder. To be perfectly clear, it's sort of her movie along with Gary Oldman as Dracula, of course, and Van Helsing. Van Helsing, uh, Anthony Hopkins sort of becomes a strong presence in the second half of the movie, and Keanu Reeves kind of diminishes, even though the movie started heavy on him, then shifted quickly to Winona Ryder and Gary Oldman. At first, Gary Oldman has scenes with Keanu Reeves, and then he becomes younger, Gary Oldman does, and this vampire can be out in the middle of the day, and he becomes younger in that the time, and he starts seducing Winona Ryder, and then you get Anthony Hopkins coming into it, and eventually, you know, Winona Ryder really willingly infects herself, and then it's a race against time to kill Dracula. And in the end, she's the one who puts him out of his misery. And but is she put out of her misery? I don't know. It, did that end her? Did that cure her? I don't know. The movie just ends. But I, even if she was is cured of the vampirism, vampirism that there's still some, some therapy that's going to be needed uh, our are her and Keanu Reeves character Jonathan are they going to stay together we don't know do we care I don't know I don't know if we care no and I don't know if we care like the movie just ends when Dracula dies it, it's over that's it so, sort of left open-ended where the characters go from there. Sort of just left open-ended where the characters go from there, to be honest. And, uh... Let's talk about... Is this a good movie? Yeah, is it, it's a good, interesting take on Dracula. It's a decent Dracula movie. Um, there could have been more of Gary Oldman actually being able to act. <laughs> there were some scenes that you don't know, weren't quite sure if it was Gary Oldman or just CGI or even the voice, you don't know. Um, but there's there's plenty of there's plenty of scenes where you know it was him. It was like when his old appearance or his young appearance, you know it was Gary Oldman. Other when he was like his demented, demonic looking appearance, you don't know. Uh, but I think that's where I'm going to conclude this review. What else is there to say about it? I didn't like it. I don't like it as a kid. I, this movie scared me. Um, 
And it doesn't really scare me anymore. Uh, would I watch it again? I, I might. Would I watch it once again every year? I don't know. Maybe uh, once in a while. Like, who knows? I have no idea where this movie falls in that. It's not something I love. You know? So, watching it once every year, maybe not, not, not make too much sense. But under circum certain circumstances, I might watch this movie again. And, uh... Yeah, three Dracula-inspired movies in a row. I mean, Nosferatu, 1922, Nosferatu the Vampire, and now Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Where do we go from here with these reviews? We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to leave this review right here. So, yes, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Is there anything else of note that we want to get? We know it's directed by Francis Ford Coppola. That's that's something we do know. What else do we need to know? That's pretty much all we really need to know. There might be some other interesting information that we might want to know though. Besides the movie. It's funny. When the movie starts it looks like it's going to be a Keanu Reeves main in the main character at the beginning of the movie it's focusing on him for a first half hour or so but then it quickly shifts half hour 45 minutes then it quickly shifts to being about different people like Winona Ryder yeah Indeed, we know that it is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, of course. Screenplay by James Hart, produced by Francis Ford Coppola, of course, and other people. Executive producers. We don't know who these people are. Starring Gary Oldman, of course. Winona Ryder. Anthony Hopkins. Keanu Reeves. Richard E. Grant. Terry Elwes, Elwes, Bill Campbell, don't know who that is, introducing Sadie Frost, that must be 
who what's her name? And with and Tom Waits is Renfield. Renfield the crazy guy. Yes, we all know about Renfield Renfield. He's the crazy guy. He appears in the Nosferatu original. Nosferatu original. He appears in the Na Nosferatu. In the Na he, he appears in the Nosferatu. He also appears in Nosferatu Vampire and Bram Stoker's Dracula and the new movie Renfield that just came out recently that focuses on Dracula's assistant. Finally, a movie about Renfield. Yeah. crazy guy. There's always a crazy guy in it. You know, Dracula's crazy assistant. We all know about Renfield. Music. Warwick Killar. Something. That's visual effects. Roman Coppola. Interesting. Family family we thing going on there uh anyway yes that's the end of the review so i hope you enjoyed this review of Bram Stoker's Dracula and i'll see you next time